Let me introduce you to my wife. She's a passionate paddle guide in her free time, but she's suffering from shoulder impingement. So last year, she decided to start an exercise program with a physiotherapist. And in only a couple of weeks, she experienced satisfactory relief. Chances are low today in Norway that you would get surgery for this type of problem, but this has been a common procedure over a period of 20, 30 years. So if we look closer at the evolution over time, we can see in the 1990s, this technique started to become more and more popular. Until in 2007, Finnish clinicians found out that this technique was less effective than thought. A couple of years afterwards, we can see that in countries like Norway and England, they observed the same thing and the technique started to be de-implemented. So what happened in these 30 years? Well, initially there were a couple of trials, smaller trials, higher risk of bias, showing no effect, but nobody really cared. It was not until the start of a large trial, 2005 in Finland, that people observed that people observed that this is not the way to go. 2012, also the UK started a larger trial and you can see the same effect after one year, data are being analyzed, people talk on conferences. Okay, the message comes across. Today in Norway, you can see the numbers here, they have gone down. The most precise uh, data show that we are at- Oh yeah. Uh... Okay, I'll try to mute. Um, yeah, I'll just continue. So in 2018, the findings from those two trials were published and that was the trigger then to also make a BMJ rapid recommendation on the topic being published in February, 2019. So a strong recommendation to stop with arthroscopic surgery for shoulder impingement and a strong recommendation for physiotherapy or non-operative management only. So, okay, shoulder atroscopy is on its way out. That's good, but did we really need 30 years to learn? Can't we do this faster? And this is exactly the ambition of the E3 project, also called the Enhanced Evidence Ecosystem. Our ambition is to turn this slow and cumbersome process into a streamlined collaboration across partners in the ecosystem. And this needs bridges that we need to build. And the essential starting point is conversations with people like we are having today. So in the presentation now, I want to discuss with you how we are designing ecosystems how we are trying to build those bridges while we are walking on them and which methods we are exploring to demonstrate, to evaluate if we are practice changing. All these parts involve research and our brand new magician, Siri Seter Elf, will focus on that as part of her PhD. So this will take us three years. Um, we will have a focus mostly on Norway but we are also discussing with other countries that are having an interest in following the same research methods. So the first step, how are we designing this ecosystem? Well, we need a map. We need a map to understand how the current ecosystem is organized in Norway. And therefore we're having interviews with key persons from different sectors in the evidence ecosystem. We will ask them general questions and we will present them existing BMJ rapid recommendations to understand how they impacted care in Norway. Did they come in time? Were they used? Were they noticed? Were any implementation activities related to that? I think we can learn from those interviews. So that will give us an understanding of where we are now, but then how to come to an enhanced ecosystem. Well, I hope the interviews will give us new insights. But in addition to that, we also want to visit implementation leaders abroad to learn from them, how are they organized? And then to come up with suggestions for an enhanced ecosystem. 
we will work through three cases, either existing BMJ rapid recs or recommendations that we will develop from now on. And then we will go through this process from the guidance being disseminated internationally, then coming to Norway. There we need an adaptation process. We need an implementation strategy and we need a strategy to evaluate if this is changing practice or not. But to pick our cases, we think it's important to look how recommendations differ. And Thomas, you already mentioned um, this. We, we have different categories. We have either strong recommendations where we think this is appropriate for every patient or nearly all patients. We also have weak recommendations or conditional recommendations, and those require shared decision making. And also within the E3 project, we relate to the Match It project. Um, so we will also focus on this case. And then what about recommendations against the implementation? Also, those require a different approach. So we will have those um, on one side, but then we will also explore different methods to evaluate change in practice. We will try to use data available through the electronic medical records to see what is the baseline and what happens from month to month throughout the implementation strategy. The same for registry data available in Norway. How can we use that as guideline developers? For us, there is kind of uh, a way forward to discover. We want to um, find out what would be the easiest way for us to make efficient use of that. And then of course, there are different quality improvement processes. Also those, we will use them in one of the cases or in um, more of them. So computerized decision support will be the implementation strategy the, of first choice. We'll open up to other strategies when needed, but we have a primary interest in computerized decision support. And our partner DIPS is supporting us in getting magic recommendations into the electronic medical record, as for example, being used here at Lovisenberg Diakonale Hospital. So you can see here, for example, this is a, a demo uh, for a patient, Dreivang um, Kair Anne, I think. Uh, she is suffering from diabetes type 2. We can also see that she is having a kidney disease. DIPS is helping us through smart methods to either use structured data available in the electronic medical record or information that is available narratively, um, quick notes in through the electronic record to make the connection with recommendations available in MagicCap and to show them in the heart of the workflow in the electronic medical record. While the patient is there, the physician can then make choices to uh, how to um, organize treatment. So evolving from ego systems to ecosystems is what is hidden behind this Zoom uh, tab. Well, we are grateful for this rich and growing pool of partners, both Norwegian partners and international partners. Um, we're grateful for the funding that we have from Health Sørøst for this three-year project. I think all here can agree that it is University Hospital in Northern Norway that has the coolest logo. Um, and we, um, yeah, we have a standing invitation. We want more partners. We might not know you right now, but this is an invitation. If you feel our logo should be part of that screen, um, or we are having a really interesting case for you, or we're having a piece of the puzzle that can help you move through this ecosystem, well, then just drop us an email at tain at magicevidence.org and we start the conversation with you, making this a co-create process. Or maybe you liked the initial ID best to have a paddle trip together with my wife. If so, I will not be mad. Send me an email and we can fix that as well. Thank you so much.